Well, hello and welcome back. I'm Pastor Rita Gant and my husband, Pastor Tori, and our church family welcome you to this teaching tonight. Let's pray. Father God, we just love you. We thank you, Lord, for your presence here with us today. We thank you, Lord, that we open up our hearts to receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, uh, tonight's message is called The Power of Pursuit. And my byline here is God is your internal security and draw close to him for your reassurance because he will not disappoint you. So you may have heard it said before, you get out of it what you put into it. Well, pursuing God and all that he has for you is just so powerful in your life. That's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to talk about the benefits of really drawing close to God. If you want the best life possible, the power of pursuing God is a must for you. I'm going to start in James 4, 8. I have it here in the ESV. It says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. And then I also have it in the Amplified. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. So we must come close to God to enjoy His closeness. And then to get the full power of His presence, we need to empty our hearts from any hindrance and make sure that our minds are not distracted by earthly or worldly things. Uh, when we go to God completely, emptying out the junk and honoring Him for who He is, then we will get the, we will get the full measure of His closeness. And I'm going to teach you tonight on why that is just so, so important. Many of us already know Jeremiah 29, 11. I have it here in the NIV. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Well, I wanted us to go ahead and read the next couple of verses after that. And I have that, uh, Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13 here in the ESV. Then, so that was God saying, I know the thoughts and plans I have for you plans to give you hope and a good future, an expected end, his expected end. And then he goes on to say, then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. See, the condition of the heart when we go to God is so, so important. When we are crying out to God and drawing close to God, we must do it with our whole heart. God is not a halfway kind of, of being. He's not a halfway kind of God. You know, in Revelation it says, be not cold or hot. Be either cold or hot, But because if you're just lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out. So God wants all of your passion. He wants all of your heart. He wants all of your attention and, and your focus. And what I mean by that is not in a way that we can't even have life and enjoy other things, but in a way that when we go to God, when we cry out to God, when we draw close to God, it's time to, to put everything else away, all the distractions and, and all the other junk and worries and, and just all the other things, and just really press in and draw close to Him and just give Him your whole heart, empty out your heart. If you have any unforgiveness, any bitterness, any, any uh, misunderstanding, confusion, whatever it is, just, just empty it out to Him and say, God, you know, I'm dealing with all this junk and I just want it out away from me. I just want to draw close to you. I just want to be close to you. When you do that, you're giving him all of your attention and all of your focus. And that's where the power of his closeness is. He wants your whole heart in, ret in, re in return. He will give you complete peace and security, inward security. Um, Proverbs 3.26, I have it here in the NLT, says, For the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. And uh, this scripture really stood out to me, so I went ahead and, and looked it up in the original Hebrew uh, text, and, and I looked through the commentaries. I just really wanted to get a good understanding of, of this scripture. And so translated closely from the Hebrew, it's, it goes like something like this. For the Lord, the God of Israel, will become your confidence, your security, your trust the very center of your being. And that, that word confidence and security and trust there in the Hebrew is um, also in the Strong's uh, Concordance translated uh, viscera. <laughs> and I was like, is, isn't that like, I'm like, I know what that means. Isn't that like your organs and stuff? So I looked it up and yes, what it means is it's like the heart, the, the soft, the, the very deep center of your being is what that means. So so he wants to be your your confidence, your security, the very center of your being. Um, the Lord of Israel, the God, the Lord, the God of Israel will become your confidence, your security, your trust, the very center of your being. Um, 
like your heart, your, your everything. And he will guard, this is still the, con the continuation of the translation, and he will guard, protect, and attend to you and keep you from anything that would try to ensnare you or trap you or harm you. See, when we go to God and we make him our confidence, our trust, our security, then he can move in his power to keep us from being ensnared in anything that would try to get us, that would try to keep us, that would try to harm us. So when we draw close to God in trust, he will draw close to us and he will become our security. He will become our confidence. Crying out to God is also considered just pursuing him, just running after him. And, you know, we know that even the prodigal son, whenever uh, the, the parable of the prodigal son, whenever God saw the son returning, he ran to him. The son was running to him and he was running to him. You know, they were running toward each other, each other. And so when we're drawing close to God, when we're pursuing God, God is coming for us with all of his resources, all of his power, all of his goodness. I found an article online about just crying out to God, and, and I wanted to share some of it with you. Um, it's from the Institute in Basic Life Principles. So what is it says, what does it mean to cry out to God? So the power of crying out throughout history Believers have cried out to God in times of distress. Sometimes after years of praying, a single cry out to God in a desperate, in desperation or in a, a fervent just cry will bring a sudden re result. You know, we can pray and we can stand in faith, but sometimes we just need to just cry out to God and just, you know, give Him our all and, and uh, just, just cry out to Him. And, and sometimes that can just bring that instant delivery. It will always bring instant delivery relief, like I said last week. Many have wondered why there are such powerful results from simply crying out to God, yet the promise is clear in Psalms 50:15. It says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. The rest of these are, uh, until I change up, are all in the King James Version. Psalms 50:15. call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. Throughout scripture, believers are instructed to cry out to God in times of trouble. Here are a few more examples. Jeremiah 33, 3, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And then Psalms 34, 17, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Psalms 56, 9, When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Crying out in Scripture, um, here in the Greek and the Hebrew, are some words and definitions and descriptions about how crying out to God is used in Scripture to give us a clear picture of what it means to cry out to God. There is like a cry of deep distress in the Hebrew word Z-A-A-Q. Um, out of Nehemiah 9, 9 through 11, God did see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt and, and heard their cry by the Red Sea, and he divided the sea before them so that they went through in the midst on the, uh, of the sea on the dry land. When you cry out for help, that's the Hebrew word T-S-A-A-Q. When the Israelites couldn't find fresh water, Moses cried out for help. Exodus 15, 25, and, and uh, you know, the waters were made sweet. When you call out with the, like a loud sound, uh, Hebrew word Q-A-R-A, -A, Jabez called out to God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me indeed, and God granted him that which he requested. That was 1 Chronicles 4.10. To shout a war cry... Hebrew R-U-W-A. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, a cry out, and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel. Second Chronicles 13, 15, that was a cry of uh, deliverance. A cry for help, Shava, S-H-A-V-A-H in the Hebrew. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry, Shava, and will save them, Psalms 145, 19. And, um, a cry of deep distress, T-S-A-A-Q-A-H in the Hebrew, he forgetteth not the cry of deep distress of the humble, Psalms 9, 12. And just a couple more, one more, to cry out, See, it's K-R-A-Z-O in the Greek, when the apostle Peter walked out on the water at the invitation of Jesus, Peter was afraid and began to sink, and he cried out, saying, Lord, save me, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. That's in Matthew 14, 30-31. Um, I actually got one more in Luke 18, 38-42. It uh, means to implore with strong voice to, you know, another shout. B-O-A-A. -A -A. B-O-A. 
O in the Greek, a blind man in Jericho heard that Jesus was passing near him, and he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith has saved thee. So you can see all the different, um, in these examples, different cries out, different shouts out to God. And I want to just tell you tonight, it's important for us to turn to God um, every day, but especially in times of distress or or, or even fear, and just to, to cry out to God, and, and relief will immediately come, and God will go to, go to bat for you, and the power of God will move. Crying out to God is an act of desperation and total concentration. It is a fervent expression of faith in God and trust in His goodness and power to act on your behalf. Crying out to God expresses the following traits. Okay, there's just a few tr things I want to show. Um, oh, my goodness. Um... Crying out to God, excuse me, just a moment. Um, crying out to God will show you, um, let me just restart that. Crying out to God expresses the following traits. Genuine humility. It's hard for people to admit that they cannot solve a problem, especially me, or overcome an obstacle. Um, but it is true that we need God's help. He delights in a contrite heart that humbly seeks his aid. Um, Psalms 9.12, also Psalms 10.17, He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Another trait to, that crying out to God expresses is unconditional surrender. When a situation becomes so desperate that only God can deliver you, a cry represents total, unconditional surrender. Don't try to bargain with God. Leave your life in His hands. Psalms 66.18 um, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So like I said earlier, get junk out of your heart. You know, that went with our first scripture. Uh, another uh, um, characteristic is a plea for mercy. Apart from Christ, we don't have access to God's favor. When driven to a point of despair, your humanity before God often becomes more apparent. And it can motivate you to cry out. When you when you realize that you can't do this on your own, it it shines a light on your humanity and and. And in that desperation, you you may get the revelation to cry out to God for a relief and for help. Um, Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Personal helplessness. Do you tend to believe that you need God's help only with the really hard things? Because God wants to help you with everything. Remember, John 15, 5 says, without me, you can do nothing. That's what Jesus said. Without me, you can do nothing. The well, last time I checked, nothing <laughs> means nothing. And so we need God. We need to cry out to God. We need to have connection with God every day for Him to help us with everything. Because without Him, we can do nothing. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to go fast because I have a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> so you can back this up if you need to. Faith in God's power and resources. Your cry to God acknowledges God's ability to do what no one else can do. During the storm on the Sea of Galilee, the disciples acknowledged Jesus' power to rescue them when they cried out, Lord, save us. We perish. And that's Matthew 8, 25. So, you know, faith in God's power and His resources. Um, when we acknowledge God's power and His, we understand that He is the one that has everything that we need, and He is our our greatest resource. You know, so when we acknowledge that, um, you know, we acknowledge His ability to do what no one else can do for us, and He desires to do it. Desperation, crying out to God, is an admission of one's need for God. The psalmist declared in Psalms 18.6, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. So, also examples of God's response. Um, I've got some examples here of God's response to people that cried out to him in the Bible. You know, when, you, when, you're, when you're drawing close to God and you're truly wanting everything that God has for you and you empty your heart out to God and, and you're pressing in, you know, these, these cries to God really mean so much. Because they mean that you you are expecting him to move and and you're done trying to do it all on your own and and that's you know <laughs> something that I've had to really learn because I'm so independent I moved out when I was fifteen you know and, and just 
I've had to learn to really trust and rely on God as my greatest resource. And, and I know maybe you have too, but um, it's time for us to just go a little deeper and, and press in a little more and draw a little closer, you know, because when we draw close to God, He, draw clo he draws close to us. And, and He is our very present help in time of trouble. Amen. So I've got some examples of God's response. I'm not going to take the time to read the whole scripture, but I'm going to give you the reference and you can research it out if you'd like. But um, I'll tell you what happened. The examples of God's response to crying out. The Bible is filled with examples of times when God answered the cries of his people. Below are a few examples of, of occasions on which individuals cried out to God, and God heard their cries and delivered them. Elijah cried out, and God revived a dead child. That was in 1 Kings 17-20. through 20. Um, Jehoshaphat cried out, and God delivered him from death. 2 Chronicles 18.31 Hezekiah cried out, and God gave him victory. Um, and that is Second Chronicles 32, 20 through 21. Jesus' disciples cried out to him in a storm, Luke 8, 23 through 24. And uh, Jesus calmed the sea and rescued them. Blind Bartimaeus called out to Jesus, and Jesus restored his sight. And that was um, Mark 10, 46. So crying out to God can have great power when you pursue God, when you get close to God, when you empty out your heart of distraction and, and, and any kind of sin like we talked about last week, then we can get into a position to where we can actually have God able to move on our behalf in, in such a mighty and powerful way. And, and you know, like I said, when it's starting out, um, when you cry out to God, um, it's, it's somewhat a little different than just praying and standing and praying and standing. And praying and standing is great, but sometimes we can do that for years and not really have the breakthrough that we need. And, and then just cry out to God in desperation and with a, a clean heart and a desire for closeness. And, and then suddenly things can happen and change. And, and I, I think that God really, really considers the condition of our heart. And, you know, we can... We can stand in faith for forever and, and, and watch Him move that way as well. But I think when we just really empty out our hearts and get to the point where we just know that God is our only resource, or our only hope, then, you know, it, it moves something on the heart of God. And so I just want to encourage you tonight. Um, Psalms fifty fifteen. I already read this, but it declares that um, this so strongly, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee. And as children of the living God, our Heavenly Father appeals to us to cry out to Him for deliverance. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver thee. Let us be quick to cry out to Him with humility, sincerity, and faith. God will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him. He also will hear their cry and save them. That's Psalms 145.19. God will fulfill the desire of them that fear Him, reverence Him, respect Him like we talked about last week. He also will hear their cry and will save them. God is our security. Psalms 46, 1, I have it here in the NLT. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. One translation says, a very present help in time of trouble. God is the greatest, most powerful resource that you have. And, you know, I, I, I think it's important for us to remember to cry out to Him, to, to go to Him, and to empty ourselves out to him you know and so why don't why don't we do that more often why don't people cry out to God more often why do you think um, it's sometimes just the last resort and maybe it's because of a lack of trust like I talked about last week you've got to get to know him in order to be able to trust him and um, you know sometimes it's a lack of trust because we haven't spent the time in the word or spent the time talking to him or nurturing the relationship that we need to in order to trust him maybe people just don't think about it you know if if you're in distress or in in um, you know in a hard situation um, that can be all-consuming distress has a way of consuming a person's thoughts and if we don't cultivate a relationship um, with God daily, then maybe we will not think to cry out to Him whenever, um, whenever this time happens to us, whenever we get into a position to where we 
are desperate or or in a situation where we're we're pressed, you know, if we haven't really cultivated a a daily relationship with him, then maybe we won't think to go to him. And maybe that's one reason why people don't cry out to him and and press into him and get close enough to him to really benefit fully from that relationship. Um, sometimes we become so busy trying to reason it all out ourselves and trying to solve and fix our own problems that we don't think to cry out to him. You know, and he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his help or his affections on you. And so he's waiting for you to draw close to him so that he can draw close to you and give you the, the just and unleash the full power of his half, of, of his help on your behalf. So, you know, he's waiting for you to draw close. And, and it's not hard. All you have to do is talk to him. You know, find a, a, a place where you can just be alone with him and and uh, and cry out to him. When my kids were little, it was in my closet. Like, I actually had to literally, when they were taking naps, go in my closet, shut the door, and cry out to God. Or leave the door open so I could hear from them. But, you know, just find a place where you can be alone with him. I've had to go into the bathroom sometimes just to be alone. You know, and sometimes the kids put their little fingers underneath the door. You know, it's just, just do what you got to do to draw close to God. And you won't be sorry. Draw close to God. Cry out to Him. He's got your deliverance. He's got your answer. And He wants to bring it suddenly for you with His full power. We are made as believers to crave Him and to, to desire the internal security that He has for us of knowing that no matter what happens with Him, we will be okay. No matter what happens, no matter what comes against you, you you just know just down deep in your in your core that it's going to be okay because God is there for you. He's your internal security and that's what I want for every single one of you. I want you to just have that connection to where you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to be okay no matter what. Just know that if we cry out to him, he will be there for us. You just got to know that if you cry out to him, he will be there for you. And that he'll never leave you or forsake you, Hebrews thirteen five, and that with him you can do all things, Philippians four thirteen, and not that you can you can you can endure and survive, and not only survive but thrive, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, um, through any adversity, James one two through five. There is power in pursuing him, drawing close to him, cleansing our hearts for him, and keeping our loyalty, our devotion, and our trust in him. We talked earlier about, uh, you know, not dividing, not dividing ourselves uh, or being double-minded or dividing ourselves between him and the world or the way that the world would have us think about things or look at things. So um, just there's great power in, in your loyalty to God. There's great power there when you draw close and empty out yourself to him. God is your internal security. Draw close to him for your reassurance. Cry out to him for his help and he will not disappoint you I promise he is there for you and so I just want to encourage you that if you haven't drawn close to God lately or had a special time with him just take a moment to just really get along with him and just cry out to him and, and unburden yourself and give him everything and, and you know if there's any kind of unforgiveness or bitterness or or anything in your heart just just whatever it is, just get it out and say, God, I repent from all of that. I know we don't have time for that. I just ask you, Lord, to clean my, cleanse my heart from it. And just, you know, and God, if I'm, if I'm been unloyal to you or disloyal to you or, or I've been keeping my thoughts on things that are not pleasing to you or, un, or worldly or, you know, trusting other things to help me more than I trust you, then God, I repent for that. And just go to Him and really draw close to Him. And when you do that, He'll draw close to you. And you'll be flooded with the peace of God that passes understanding and guards your heart and your mind. And you'll know that everything's going to be okay. And that God is for you, never against you. And so I just want to encourage you that there's power in the pursuit of God. If you will draw close to Him, He will draw close to you. And then He will unleash the full power of His presence in your life. And you'll feel the, the closeness. And you'll know that you know that you know that you're going to be okay. So I just want to encourage you 
And no matter what you're going through, God is there for you. And maybe you're not going through something, but maybe somebody else is, and they need to hear this for, through you. And maybe they didn't have access to this teaching, but they have access to you. Be an encouragement. Be a light for the kingdom of God. Amen. And I am just about out of time. I knew I had to go fast. But if you need to re-listen to this and take some notes, please do so. And just get it down deep inside of you. Um, but let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we love you. We just hide your word in our heart that will not sin against you, Lord. Help us to cleanse our hearts and, and our hands, Lord God, before you and draw close to you. We want you more than anything else. Thank you for being our greatest resource, our greatest advocate, Lord God. We love you. We thank you, Lord God, that we will come close to you. And thank you, Lord God, that you'll never leave us or forsake us. You are so good all the time, Lord. And we're so, so grateful. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you tonight. Amen.